Well, a very good day ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another episode of the Candy Talk here on Haman Manyura's YouTube channel. It's been years since the last time that we were under this tree here. But of course, I'm here with Wakili Willis Otien. Wakili, how are you? I'm fine, thank you. Have we ever recorded with you at this particular uh, spot? Not yet. Uh -huh. Yes. <laughs> at least we are here with mm. the monkeys uh, running around. Mm. But let's have this conversation going. Here, people are looking at two years since uh, the uh, Kenya Kwanza regime took over this uh, particular country. And of course, they came in with a lot of promises and uh, people were actually uh, having a lot of expectations from them. Let me get it from you right now. So far, so good, depending on how you perceive how this country has been run so far. What would you make of the two years of the Kenya Kwanza administration? Two years of pain. Hmm. Two years of fakeness. Two years of corruption. <laughs> two years of malaise. Two years of ineptitude. Two years of total failure. That is what Kenya Kwanza's two years is to this country. Uh, we are now even now retrogressing in terms of our political rights. Mm -hmm. We have lost a future. If you look at how Kenya Kwanza is handling our healthcare system, the healthcare system has collapsed. The education sector is in shambles. University students are not even able to afford a university fees. The JSS teachers is still hanging in the balance. We don't know what their fate is. The CBC rollout is not meeting the expectations. Mm -hmm. You go to the agricultural sector, it's a failed agricultural policy. What they thought was the free fertilizer or the surplus fertilizer mm -hmm. has turned out to be the largest scam. You go to food security in that entire agriculture sector, mm -hmm. there's nothing government is doing in terms of boosting food security to our people. Mm -hmm. You go to the household, what is the value, the cost of what we call your food basket? When Kenya Kwanza came into power, the food basket cost around 1,200. Mm -hmm. Today it's almost 1,900. A basic food basket for a family of five. Mm -hmm. So Kenya Kwanza is about failure. Look at our infrastructure, the road networks in this country. The roads are now dilapidated. You cannot say that which road they have done, a newly uh, commissioned road, mm -hmm. that they are working on even at this moment, four points, that you can say is going to improve on the agricultural productivity of this nation. So to me, it is two years of missed chances, two years of failure and pain to the people. Mm. There's nothing good that will come out of Kenya Kwanza. Mm. That is their track record. And this is not my view. This is obvious. This I'm not even arguing over. Mm -hmm. These are fact these are facts that any Kenyan, wherever they are, can see it. Look at William's uh, international credentials today. He goes to Germany, and now the rest of Africa is up in arms against Kenyans. He goes there to negotiate what may turn out to be an incitement to the German people mm -hmm. to kick out Africans, African expatriates who are working in Germany. Mm -hmm. Now they are calling them immigrants. Those are expatriates. Expatriates who are doing what the Mzungu did when he came to Africa. Mm -hmm. Why is he now entering a labor agreement that is going to disenfranchise our fellow Africans, not just Kenyans? Mm -hmm. Look at his U.S. trip. Mm -hmm. He even uh, gave a bad omen to Biden. He couldn't even run as president. Look at his African campaign. Mm -hmm. We are now a pariah nation. On a normal day, Raila will not be struggling mm -hmm. to become the chairperson of AU. But now he's campaigning hard and struggling because of William Ruto. Mm -hmm. He's isolated the whole of Africa. They see him as a sellout. Mm -hmm. He's a house nigger who has sold out his black people to, for some interests of the West, who we do, which you don't even understand. So it's two years of pain, two years of failure. That is the summary of their scorecard mm. today. Well, where do you think the president actually got it wrong? What was the ideology that informed him? He got it wrong from the day one, on the 13th of September, mm -hmm. 2022. 13th of September, 2022, at Kasarani Stadium. Mm -hmm. William Ruto failed to tell us a vision. Mm -hmm. He had no vision. William Ruto on the 13th of September spoke operations. Mm -hmm. I'm going to appoint new judges who are due for appointment. I'll appoint them. I am going to do this. Mm -hmm. He did operations. He didn't sell a vision for the country. So how fine you appoint judges. Mm -hmm. What happens after that? 
Is it, was it a vision of how to enhance access to justice? Did he sell you any vision of access to justice? There was nothing. <laughs> when he talked about, I'm going to reduce fertilizer, did he talk about a vision on food security <laughs> or boosting productive production in this country? He didn't. So on the 13th of September, 2022, he lost it. <laughs> he spoke operations. That was his mindset. His mind could not conceptualize a vision for the country. <laughs> when he starts talking about operations, what will that clerical office and the ministry do? Because those are the people who do operations, technical stuff. Mm -hmm. From a presidential level, you need to be talking vision okay. that everybody can plug into mm -hmm. and uh, help to actualize that vision that you sold. Mm -hmm. He didn't sell a vision. Okay. And up to date, he has never sold a vision. Mm -hmm. That's why he talks operations. Mm -hmm. He does things that even ambassadors mm -hmm. should be doing. Mm -hmm. The minister of foreign affairs should be doing some of the meetings he does abroad. Mm -hmm. It's not him. But he's an operations person. Mm -hmm. So operations respond to today's events. Cumulatively, mm -hmm. they are not informed by any vision or underlying ideology. Mm -hmm. Is ideology less? The only ideology that seems to inform Kenya Kwanza and William Ruto mm -hmm. is an ideology of corruption to accumulate and to amass wealth mm -hmm. in proportions that have never been seen in this country before. Mm -hmm. That's why they see deals being signed every day. Mm. To them now, the Public Procurement and Asset Disposal Act mm -hmm. is an inconvenience. They no longer make reference to it. Mm -hmm. They think the easiest way through which you are going to acquire wealth is to enter into these so-called PPPs mm -hmm. and bring in your come-through fronts mm -hmm. to own public assets that the people of Kenya have. Mm -hmm. You become now the local owners, pretending mm -hmm. that you, you are fronting some Indians or rather foreigners, mm -hmm. to be the face of it. So that's the only vision they seem to have. Mm. That's their mission. The bottom-up economic transformation agenda, of course, that was well entrenched in the Kenya Kwanzaa Manifesto, should have envisioned how the president uh, wanted, or rather planned to take this country out of the economic dungeon that the country was in at that particular moment. So far, so good. Uh, would you say that uh, that particular uh, manifesto has not actually helped, uh, rather worked for the president. If the country was an economic dungeon to take it out of it, who put it there in the first place? Who was the deputy president? Who was the majority leader? Mm -hmm. Who was the chair of budget? Who was the Central Bank of Kenya governor? Mm -hmm. Who was the PS Treasury? I mean, right from the beginning, mm -hmm. their plan could not start from saying we are going to get Kenyans out of the economic dungeon. Okay. Because they're the ones who put it there if it was there in the first place. Do you believe that the buck stops with the president? Who else? Who chairs cabinet? Then if that Who chairs national security cabinet? Okay, so if the buck stops with the president, yes. at that particular moment he was the deputy president, why then would you blame Sitting him in for cabinet, the right? that Have you heard of the concept of collective responsibility? Of course not. Yes. And what's the main purpose of cabinet? To advise the president. Mm -hmm. So why do you run away from him? So he was there in the cabinet meetings. So you're saying that he was part and parcel of the problem that... Uh, yes, they gave that president, they gave that president the advice. Okay. And they passed policies. Uru was not a dictator mm -hmm. that was running, ruling this country by fiat. You will sit with the cabinet and will be shown pictures mm -hmm. of them sitting together and telling us what they are doing. Mm -hmm. And William Ruto was parroting outside there, telling us how the great plans they have. Mm -hmm. On the question of debt, how many times did William Ruto go to the media mm -hmm. to talk about Eurobon? And they said not even a single coin has been lost. He said they are going to do massive development projects with the Eurobonds. Where are those projects? Mm -hmm. So yes, the backs of the president, mm -hmm. but the cabinet takes responsibility. Mm -hmm. And William Ruto in particular takes uh -huh. higher responsibility. He was the champion of these things. There are claims of him being sidelined, especially tell after me which the handshake between Tell Uru me which Kenyatta cabinet and, uh, meeting took uh, place without his participation. Okay. None. Tell me which cabinet meeting where he registered his opposing view, minority view. None. So let's not be gaslit. Okay. Because you are being gaslighted now. Mm -hmm. That oh he was sidelined. That's manipulation. At least that it was what he said back then. No, that's manipulation. That's I'm telling you, don't don't allow yourself to be manipulated. Okay. That is now political talk. Mm -hmm. Because if you were disagreeing with Uru on policy, mm -hmm. you could have come out to say I have a disagreed view on this particular policy. But all economic policies of William of Uru Kenyatta, William Ruto defended them. Mm -hmm. He was actually the marketer, chief marketing officer of those policies. Okay. So at what point was he being sidelined when he was marketing them? Mm -hmm. So he was not. So you're saying you know, that he's responsible now, for the problems He is that responsible. He okay. was there. Uh -huh. Don't allow William Ruto to manipulate. That's how he, con he cons Kenyans. Mm -hmm. But now, Wajinga wa Meisha, mm -hmm. Kenyans are now woke. Mm -hmm. Kenyans are now more enlightened. Mm -hmm. They can put you to task. When you disagree with 
a cabinet decision or a particular policy decision, put your views in public. Even if you don't know how to write, you can go on TikTok and record a video, audio. We'll watch you saying what you are saying. Mm -hmm. And it'll be on public record that you disagreed. You didn't, they never disagreed with any of this. Mm -hmm. The policy of Uru Kenyatta. Okay. Which one? None. Mm -hmm. So it bears responsibility for their failures. Okay. But we are even past the stage of blaming Uru Kenyatta. Mm -hmm. It's two years he's been there. What has he undone? He has caused more pain than Uru Kenyatta did. Mm -hmm. In fact, he's going on the red record books today of the five presidents we've had. Mm -hmm. He seems to be the worst of them. Yeah? In his two years, what has he done? He has caused more pain to Kenyans. I've just enumerated to you mm -hmm. the social collapse of this nation today under his uh, watch. Mm -hmm. You don't blame Uru Kenyatta for that. It's him. Okay. What has he done to undo whatever he disagreed with during Uru Kenyatta's time? None. Mm -hmm. So we must be f factual. There is more pain. The people are crying more today than they were crying yesterday. Mm -hmm. So why do you still want to blame the person of yesterday? Deal with the person who is causing the pain today. Okay. There's nothing he's doing that you can point to. Hmm. Even projects that he runs around claiming to be launching or supervising, mm -hmm. so the so-called affordable housing, those were Uru's projects. Mm -hmm. What has he done? Okay. Yeah. Back, then, back then we were asking whether the bottom-up uh, economic transformation kind of agenda would work. Uh, but right now we are asking, is it working? And if it's not, then why do you think it's not working? I've just told you, mm -hmm. look at university education. Majority of university students mm -hmm. can't afford fees. They come from poor backgrounds. If that thing was working, mm -hmm. we will be seeing enhanced funding to the university students. Okay. But what we are seeing is the opposite. They are transferring more obligations to pay higher fees mm -hmm. to the student. Government is shucking away its responsibility to those students. So that's the basic. It's not working. If it was a question of health care, the poor, who are the ones who largely go to public hospital facilities? Mm -hmm. Look at the state of healthcare in this country today. You have a demoralized health workforce. You have a healthcare system that does not provide basic medicines mm -hmm. in facilities. Mm -hmm. So, this government is very harsh on the poor. The so called bottom up, mm -hmm. eh? so called hustlers. They are the ones who are bear bearing the brunt of these failed economic policies. Mm -hmm. So that is why we should be very clear. The buck stops with William Ruto. He must bear responsibility for the pain the people of Kenya are going through mm -hmm. today. Okay. Yeah. And you're saying as well he cannot run away from uh, the past. Anyway, let's have it here. Mm. We are here as a country and of course the president uh, maybe has two or more years, maybe two and a half years to go before we uh, the next uh, general elections are held here in 2027. Uh, don't you then think that perhaps maybe he could actually change tune and do things differently and how differently could he actually do them so that uh, he doesn't get this very funny scorecards that we are witnessing here? When did the leopard change its spots? If somebody tells you who he is, mm -hmm. you believe them. William Ruto has told us who he is. Michelle Obama said something that was very profound. Mm -hmm. Power does not change anyone. It just reveals your true character. William Ruto is two years. He's now, his true character has been revealed. He cannot hide anymore. Mm -hmm. And he cannot change his spots. That is who he is. Take him for who he is. Mm -hmm. And Kenyans have said, that is not the leadership we want. That who he is, is not the leadership we want, mm -hmm. as Kenyans. So we believe him. And his date with destiny is coming. Kenyans will deal with him in the democratic way that we know. Mm -hmm. They'll deal with him. So if you ask me that he's going to change, change to what? I mean, it's been two years. What, is, what change? I mean, he's here, and, uh, and I'm, what, so, what changed? I'm so certain the president is alive to the talk in town, what people are saying regarding how he's managed this country for the past two years. And if at all people are saying that he's failed, then maybe there's that slim chance that he might actually change. Do you know, do do you know in the Bible there was this king who, when people were complaining about the, how they were being whipped, mm -hmm. with whips, and the king said, in fact, go and tie scorpions on those whips and whip them now properly. Mm -hmm. That is William Ruto. Because the more Kenyans complain, the more he put scorpion heads mm -hmm. on the whips mm -hmm. to cause more pain. So, Kenya, you're the only person who thinks William Ruto is going to change. But it's okay, good luck. No, we'll no, be no. here next month. <laughs> we'll be here next month to see how he has changed. It's but what I assure you, it's, it's uh -huh. you, you think he will. Uh -huh. 
But he has told you who no, he is. No, no, no. Why, are you, why are you asking? Why are you asking more of William right. Ruto? We are here, and of course, I don't dispute the fact that you've said the economy is actually in a bad shape. Yeah, but then something has to be done about it. So, what would you want the president to do to make these things better? You think it's by default or by design? Mm -hmm. Of course, he knows what he's doing. He knows the pain he's causing to Kenyans. Okay. But you still think he's going to change. You are suffering from what is called the Stockholm Syndrome. Mm -hmm. Where your abuser, mm -hmm. you still think your abuser, there's some good in your abuser. Mm -hmm. So you still think there's some good in William Ruto. Anybody who thinks there's any good that had come out of William Ruto in mm -hmm. terms of our economic pain, you are suffering from the Stockholm Syndrome. You are the abused partner mm -hmm. who refuses to leave, hoping that my partner will change. Why would you? He will not change. Mm -hmm. He has told you who he is. Okay? Take him for who he has told you. Or accept to live with the pain. But don't expect him to change. Hmm. The problem now is you has moved from the abuser. It's on you. Mm -hmm. You either accept or you change your circumstances. Mm -hmm. So it is foolhardy to think that William Ruto will change. He will not. Mm -hmm. He has revealed to you his true character. So take him for who he is. Either accept to live with him as he is, mm -hmm. or you find ways of dealing with him as providing the constitution. Mm -hmm. But to expect him to change, change to what? To what is not. Okay. So you must liberate your mind and analyze William Ruto mm -hmm. to know who he truly is. Mm -hmm. He's shown you for two years, but you still think, oh, in the third year he'll change. Maybe there's some good in him. Mm -hmm. That is the mentality of an abused partner. Mm -hmm. That those who still look up to William Ruto so, so, so are you therefore trying to say that Kenyans should forget about any sort of a Damascus moment for the president uh, that uh, he would maybe sit back, re strategize, re energize, and then focus on the what should what? be done? The same person who dissolved his cabinet and brought back three quarters of them. Okay. You still think he will change? You still have hope that he'll, when he dissolved them, he said, I'll listen to Kenyans. Okinji, I'm telling you, mm -hmm. get out of the abused partner mindset. So how does that work? Anyway, because at the end of the day, we have a country here. So how then do we get out of this? And that is why most of the time when how we then, have this conversation How then you, do we get out I, I, of this? I always ask you, what's the way forward? I have told what's the you, solution? How else do we get out of this? Mm. Ruto must go. If you're having any conversation to change the economic trajectory of this nation with William Ruto as president, mm -hmm. you're wasting time. You should be focusing on the path that will get him out when the date of the next elections. How do we mobilize our citizens to make sure he doesn't come back? Mm -hmm. But if you think change will come from him, I'm sorry. Continue. He's there. Okay. Yeah, he's there. Hi. You can continue with him. He's there. <laughs> okay. I wonder how you comfortably predict doom for the next two years and you're just okay. But with... who is not living doom today? Uh -huh. you know, who is not living doom? How many Kenyans have lost their lives because of this failed economic policy of William Ruth? How many? Definitely so many. So, it's doom already for them. And their families, they are living doom. You still think about the doom of tomorrow. But people are losing their lives today. I'm not predicting any doom. People are living doom. When somebody says I'm a prophet, I'm not a prophet of doom. I'm not prophesizing we are living doom as we speak. Mm. Kenyans are dying because of the failures of William Ruto and his administration. Mm -hmm. So it's not about the Kenyans will die next year. They are dying as we speak. So you, you are refusing to look at the Kenyans who are dying today. You are looking at the ones who will die next year. What about the ones dying today? And we've been at this Okinyi for now more than one year. But something can be done to for stop more than the one year. From, uh -huh. When we started, you said the same things that oh maybe the next year things will be better. They are, we are one year down the line. Are they better? They are getting worse. Mm -hmm. So okay, you are refusing to open your eyes to the reality of the nation. That William Ruto is a failure. Mm -hmm. Him and his system, they have failed. So I've accepted our reality. And for me, you will not find any reprieve for as long as he's in office. Hmm. So accept your fate. Had you been in Ruto's uh, position, what could you, what could have you done better? I could not, I can never be in Ruto's position mm -hmm. because our ideologies are totally different. The state we, on the hill, that is right now, had you been, I'm talking about not Ruto the person, definitely. Mm. The president, that is our the economic. I, I've told you about our economic ideology. Mm -hmm. We will pursue our people's agenda, an economic ideology mm -hmm. that liberates the people from their shackles of pain. You identify which are these areas that are causing slavery to our people, mm -hmm. starting from the farmers to the financial system. Mm -hmm. Look at the entire economy. 
you, you break the shackles, the chains of slavery. Mm -hmm. I've given you an example of the financial sector. Get the government out of domestic borrowing. Just that alone is going to give a breather to so many people. Mm -hmm. So there's so much we can do. And at the appropriate time, we'll roll them out for people to listen. Yeah? So you identify what is the chain, and you break the chain. Yeah? Let the people, using their potential, self-actualize, hmm. access capital, and innovate, fund their innovations, mm -hmm. using private capital that will now be available in the market, mm -hmm. not government. We move away from demand-side economics to supply-side economics. That is the bottom line. Okay. Mm. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that is Wakili Willis Otino here. Definitely we are having a review of uh, the two years that uh, Kenya Kwanzaa administration has been in charge of uh, this particular country. And of course, you've heard what he said. You can weigh in on this conversation and tell us what you think about what the president and his entire team has done so far. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for being part of this family and thank you for watching. Till we have this conversation again, have yourself a lovely day. My name is Evans Okini.